Our chief international affairs editor, Robert Parsons, this award going to Sensov. His name had even been bantied about for the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as you say, it has been bandied about for the Nobel Peace Prize. It is a way, I suppose you could say, of putting pressure on the Russians. Uh, a great deal of anger uh, in the West, in Europe and the United States, about the annexation of Crimea by the Russians uh, and the subsequent imprisonment um, of people like Alyek Sientsov. There are others as well. And one of the reasons why Sientsov went on hunger strike was in support of the 65 or so Ukrainian political prisoners who he says are being held uh, in detention inside Russia, just like him, in different places around the country. So it's a way, in effect, of saying to the Russians, look, you've got to stop this. It's unjust. The trial that led to uh, Mr. Sientsov's detention was, as the Amnesty International described it, a, a farcical Stalinist show trial with no evidence that would, st would have stood up in a court outside of Russia. This is the message, I think, that's being sent. Uh, we're going to cr cross for a second to, to uh, Kiev and correspondent uh, Gulliver Craig, who is there. Gulliver out of Moscow. Uh, this award roundly denounced the reactions where you are diametrically opposite. As you might imagine, yes, uh, the Ukrainian leadership has welcomed uh, this award. Petro Poroshenko said that he thought it brought us closer to the day when Oleg Sentsov would be released. Pavlo Klimkin, the foreign minister, even went so far as to compare Oleg uh, Sentsov to Andrei Sakharov himself, saying that Sentsov would be for Russia uh, what Zakharov, the Soviet dissident, was for the URSS, as in a symbol of uh, the fact uh, that repressive regimes uh, always fall in the end because of the courage of those who resist them. Oleg Sentsov is very much seen in Ukraine as a symbol of Ukrainian resistance to Russian aggression. There are pictures of him up all over Kiev and other cities. And he's also very much seen as a symbol of the Ukrainian Crimea. Oleg Sentsov is from Crimea. He did all he could to try and organize a resistance uh, to the Soviet occupation of Crimea. And uh, Ukrainians view him and the other political prisoners, most of whom are also Crimean Ukrainian political prisoners who are being held in Russia, as uh, an important reminder of the fact that the Russian narrative of a peninsula that was basically happy uh, to return uh, to Moscow's fold is completely false. Uh, overall, though, would you say uh, Ukrainians have... Uh given up on the idea of getting Crimea back? Oh, I don't think people have given up on the idea of getting Crimea back. I think the feeling is probably one that it's not going to happen for a very long time there. There's certainly no sign of any um, movement at the moment. But whenever any politician or high-ranking political figure, it was the case a few months ago with the oligarch uh, uh, Viktor Pinchuk, mentions the idea of maybe doing a deal with Russia and saying, OK, you can keep Crimea in exchange for stopping the war in eastern Ukraine. They get roundly shouted down, condemned by all politicians on all sides. The idea of recognising Russia's annexation of Crimea is absolutely not on the table. Gulliver Craig, many thanks for joining us there from Kiev. Robert Parsons, um, Oleg Sensov's hunger strike, it wasn't just about uh, Crimea. It was also to draw attention to the plight of political prisoners in Russia. Absolutely. You know, the, but first of all, you know, you know, as we've just been hearing from, from Gulliver there, this was about the 65 Ukrainians from Crimea primarily who are being held unjustly, in most people's opinion, uh, in, in Rus Russian prisons. That's the essence of it. It's interesting what the, how, how the Russians have reacted to uh, the prize giving today, des describing it as a politicized decision. Well, you know, <laughs> that's the pot calling the kettle black. The imprisonment of Alyek Sientsov was about as politicized a decision as you could possibly imagine. Mm. He was imprisoned effectively because of his political beliefs, because he opposed the annexation of Crimea by Russia. He was arrested unjustly. He was tried unjustly. Uh, the case against him fell to pieces almost immediately because the main witness uh, withdrew his evidence saying that it had been got out of him under duress. And in any other country, would almost certainly the, the case would have been thrown out of court. Is it a story that Russians themselves pay attention to? Well, it's a good question, I think. But you know, it, it's hard to give a, a, a proper answer to it. I'm sure there are lots of Russians who give attention to it and are very concerned and would like to see people like Alyek Sentsov sent back to Ukraine uh, because they feel that their imprisonment is unjust. But most Russians probably accept 
the version of events that are given that is given to them by the by the leadership of Russia, by Vladimir Putin and, and others. So I, I think no, I think you know if the idea for Mr. Sienzov is to win over the the support of Russian public opinion, it's not going to happen. Whilst the, the state controls the media in Russia, there's no way that they're going to be able to get their point of view across to the mass of the Russian public. It's the same problem that the opposition itself faces with, within Russia. They can get to a certain percentage of the population, but the overwhelming mass of information coming from the state-controlled media uh, and other means is too much. Robert Parsons, many thanks for that.